In last week's episode, we talked about everybody's favorite adorable, polite reality television show, Terrace House, how it is an example of meta culture and its relationship to Let's Plays. Let's see what you had to say. Oh, we also made a video about whether or not there are no more ideas. Um, we'll talk about that too. Hat person, AKA AJ. Hello, AJ, it's very nice to see you. Uh, talks about uh, Justin McElroy's quote um, in, fr that we pulled from his piece about Terrace House and sort of talks about the dark side of reality television, which AJ uh, was involved in for a little while um, and which I actually uh, was involved in for a little while, but that's gonna go unspoken. Uh, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, uh, but I will agree with AJ's uh, with AJ's sort of description that the scene around making reality TV is often very very stressful. Um, it is made very stressful on purpose so that good television is created. Um, you know, like I've heard stories about uh, Big Brother, um, where in the house where there is no television, and I think you're only allowed to play chess if I remember correctly. You, they keep the house alternatingly either very, very cold or very, very hot, just to like sort of make people irritable and edgy. Um, and that's not uh, not out of the ordinary um, when when making reality TV that sort of thing. And so maybe Terrace House is like an antidote to this. And I want to say that, and we didn't get into this because there was really no room for it in last week's episode. I have a hunch that Terrace House is amongst one of the most produced reality TV shows in existence and that they are masterful at hiding how um, encouraged and directed the housemates are. And for everybody who's watched all of season one of Boys and Girls in the City, there are some things at the end that like, sort of hinted this maybe? Um, and we'll talk We'll talk about them later. So you have a chance to tune out uh, if you really care about reality TV spoilers. Um, no, why am I shrugging? Of course that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I think that there is, there is an outward appearance of Terrace House uh, as uh, calm in one way, but I would guess that, that it is likely that um, in another way it is exactly the same. Uh, if not even more so, it's just it's just very well put together um, to make it not seem that way. Also, uh, just on a related note, I, you know, <laughs> I, I do know who Justin McElroy is and his brothers um, and, and their work. And weirdly, I just literally did not make the connection. And so when I saw McElroy, my brain just went, oh yeah, that's, you pronounce that McElroy. And I just literally did not even consider that it was Justin McElroy. So uh, thank you to everybody who let me know um, that I pronounced that sweet, sweet boy's name wrong. David McPherson does the thing that I was hoping someone would do, which is to pick apart the various segments of Idea Channel and talk about what they are in relationship to the rubric that we put together for Metaculture um, and, sort of shows how Urban's uh, system can be pushed to just crazy absurd lengths. Uh, that, you know, everything has probably m multiple alephs and betas that are a result of it. And the movement of culture between things is multifaceted, variegated, like simultaneous, rhizomatic, crazy, just all over the place. Um, and so I wanna stress uh, that if, in your life and in understanding how things influence one another and in your work, you start to use this rubric to think about how culture and judgments about culture move around. Just keep in mind that, right, like at the end of David's comment, he, he puts the word, whoa, period. <laughs> and I think that that is an accurate reaction to the things that you can do with this system. You can get to this point where you're just like, whoa. And that what's important is knowing what kind of vocabulary you can use to identify these things and not putting together the most complete and coherent system because you will drive yourself up a wall. Lewis Grace mentions Gogglebox, uh, which we don't have in the United States, but I have watched uh, in my many travels to the UK. Um, and uh, actually we have someone on the subreddit, Fashion Sense, who was involved um, in Gogglebox uh, Australia, which, uh, hey, that's cool. Uh, for people who don't know Gogglebox, it's um, like normal people watching television. 
and you as the at-home audience watch some segments of television that those people have watched and then you watch them discuss it. Uh, you sort of just, they're, it's actually remarkably like uh, Terrace, the Terrace House panel. And I am upset that we didn't talk about this because this is such a great example of, of exactly the kind of thing. Um, they are, the idea is that they are normal people who are charismatic, that they are not um, professional uh, comedians or performers or uh, talent in any way, uh, but that they are in their, um, in their <laughs> Joe, Joe Schmo-ness. I'm not trying to insult you, Fashion Sense, I promise. Um, uh, in their sort of everydayness, they have a kind of, um, High likability, um, and I think that yeah, there's there's uh, fashion sense lets us in, lets us in on some interesting facets of how that show is produced. Uh, but I think it is Gogglebox is also a really great example of this sort of surrogate audience idea. Toby Villajama asks a a bunch of really good questions. This is just this is a great comment and includes uh, something that I'm going to be thinking about for a while, which is whether or not the laugh track is an is Aleph. Whether or not the included laugh track in something like, you know, a Big Bang Theory is a judgment on how the culture of Big Bang Theory or sitcom should be received or if it's part of the show itself. And yeah, I'm having a little bit of a like a crisis about that right now. Um but then also sort of gets to like outlines of uh, the cynical perspective that we covered um, in a little bit more detail. This idea that the panel, the surrogate audience can tell you how to feel in some way in, in more detail than we had time to. And I just, I want to continue um, much to Morgan's dismay. So I'm sorry, Morgan. <laughs> um, the, uh, what we were talking about with AJ's comment at the front and that I think an additional aspect of the panel is a, almost a kind of misdirection that when the show is heavily produced with the panel acting as though all of the actions are completely natural and completely earnest, um, you are given license, I think, to buy in um, in a way that you would not if the panel were not there. And so I think in addition to leading you through how you might react to certain situations, um, which, you know, you are always, of course, as an audience member, free to to disagree with, um, you know, pending pending your relationship to the people on screen. Um, they also, I think, provide a way to buy into the production premise of the show. Not so much the, um, the sort of story or narrative premise or mechanical premise, but the premise of how the show is actually made, which I think is, um, it is, would probably take on a, a different light, would maybe be a little bit more obvious if you didn't have these really charming people immediately reacting and being like, oh my God, why would they do that? Uh, because I think one of, in the absence of that, one of my natural reactions would be, would be, well, because they were told to. To my third channel, I just want to say that this comment is chef kiss hand motion. Great. Very, very in theme, very good. Christopher Mora and Auric Lepidopter point out that in Japan, it is actually more likely that more shows will have something like a panel so that uh, there is a kind of encouragement on um, how one should or could respond to what is happening on screen. Um, and uh, Auric Lepidopter points out, uh, talks about a Japanese friend of theirs who maybe half jokingly said that in the US without a panel on every television show, you don't you don't actually know how to feel. And uh, I, uh, yeah, we should have been clear that, that uh, what I think we were trying to figure out was whether or not this model is something that we are going to see more and more in um, uh, Western media or um, in in sort of popular culture as uh, like popular culture as a euphemism for um, American culture. But I think yes, it is it is important to say that in Japanese um, and I believe also Korean and possibly Brazilian television, um, you please correct me if I'm wrong, um, that the panel is something that is more ever present uh, than it is, uh, especially in the United States. I feel like in the UK, like there are panels, but the panel usually is the show and not something that is plastered on to, plastered is the wrong word, that is added to another format. You just watch clever people talk. Um, uh, but that, uh, I think, I think one, of the, one of the questions is whether or not that will be an increasingly um, global phenomenon. And I guess by global, I just mean, will America catch up with the rest of the world? 
Okay, now we're just gonna do a few comments about our April Fool's video regarding whether or not ideas are a resource that can be depleted. Amok206 writes a very thoughtful and uh, well-sourced comment that I'm going to respond to flippantly by asking whether or not it is funny that the idea that there are no new ideas is itself an idea that people were saying was not new a very long time ago. Mplots and Royvon have a very short, but I think very interesting and good conversation about the kind of almost like materiality of this question and whether or not the operation and construction of the universe itself has some bearing on whether or not ideas can be finished out in some way. And of course, you know, we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about quantum mechanics, influence on um, the thoughts of people, we have to talk about um, free will. Uh, and whether or not that exists. So this is a this is a thing where we can get into the weeds pretty quickly and is maybe just a sign that we should actually do an episode about this. But without getting like way deep into it, what I think is the case is that um, at any given moment, like at any given instant in time uh, in within the universe, it is possible, though not likely, all possible ideas can be had, but that as the state of things change, including productions of knowledge, uh, it is, you know, new ideas are, are generated. And so while it is in a material sense possible to exhaust all combinations of information and concepts such that all ideas are had, it is highly, highly unlikely. And finally, William Wallace, I cannot tell whether or not this comment is ironic or earnest, and therein lies its beauty. You've done good work.